The mission of the Epilepsy Foundation of Southeast Tennessee is to provide services to people with epilepsy so that they may experience the ups and downs in life. In other words, all of life experiences. And to accomplish this mission, services that we provide including includes providing medications to people with epilepsy, includes educating the public about epilepsy, and especially the first aid treatment in case they come upon a person having a seizure. It also includes advocating for people with epilepsy. There is one service that we've yet to fund, and that's visits to the neurologist. So if you want to make a difference in the life of a person with epilepsy that needs a neurology visit, please contribute to the foundation. One other thing that would, I would like to add is the fact that the dollars remain local. And of those dollars, 90% of the dollars go to accomplish the mission. Only 10% go to administrative fees. So if you want to make a difference in the life of a person with epilepsy, then please donate to our foundation. I am Alice Williams, and I have had epilepsy for about 30 years or longer, but for a lot of those years I did not know I was a person that had seizures. My name's Christy Carter. My name is Dalen Carter. Dalen has epilepsy. She was diagnosed when she was three years old. We weren't sure what was going on with her at first, but um, the seizures just kept coming and she was finally diagnosed with absent seizures. Hi, I'm Ian Cohen. I'm Ella Cohen. And for the last 10 years, Ella has battled epilepsy and we are really appreciative of the, the Epilepsy Foundation and all the work that they do. Well, um, we found the Foundation um, of Southeast Tennessee when we got his diagnosis. Satchel was around six when we got his epilepsy diagnosis. And um, I'll, I looked around, I just needed to find a support group, some, somebody we could talk to or figure out more um, more educational aspects about it. So that's when we found the, um, the Epilepsy Foundation of Southeast Tennessee, and we started coming to the support groups, and Satchel, you did what? You did the e-studio, right? Yeah. He did the epilepsy art, the e-studio. He's done it a couple years. And I learned so much coming to the epilepsy support group. My sister worked at United Way, and she told me all about coming and I could learn more about it. So I've been coming now over 30 some years. Life with a child with epilepsy is challenging for one. Um, there are things that she can't do without you know, special supervision. We had no idea that there were so many resources out there until we were connected here at the Epilepsy Foundation. Since then, we've learned a lot of things. We've been able to get a lot of support that we've needed because it is frightening. You have a child who is not responding or a child who is not doing what you think that child should do, even if it's mild or subtle, which is one reason why epilepsy awareness is so important because children in school, children in, you know, in daycare, places like that, if caregivers and teachers are not aware of some of the signs and symptoms of epilepsy, seizures can go unnoticed. Seizures can be mistaken for behavioral problems. The educational aspect's been huge because the um, foundation has come out and done education for Satchel's class. They've done the education for his school, for the teachers. And, you know, at first they didn't think they needed it or, you know, kind of declined. And then when he was having seizures on the playground and in the lunchroom and in the classroom and the other kids didn't really know what's going on. So they came out and did education um, for that at school and it made a huge difference because then the kids were no longer scared, they didn't, um, they weren't worried as much because um, they knew how to help him or what to do. Uh, Ella has had the opportunity to participate in their art camp over the summer and get to meet other kids just like her and realize that it's, it's okay to have epilepsy and that uh, you can do all sorts of cool things and um, through the support group she's seen uh, adults who have epilepsy and been able to learn that uh, their condition does not stop them. So it's been a great experience for her. The Epilepsy Foundation has sponsored a number of events that she's gotten to participate in. And for our family, it just means uh, a network and a community of, of support. I can't thank the Epilepsy Foundation enough for what they've done for us to help us down our journey for the past five years. Uh, that Daylin has been living with epilepsy. It's, it's been a complete change. 
My name is Shaughnessy Cargill. I get to be the epilepsy educator here for the foundation. And our goal is to get into as many places as possible, especially those kind of places where children and our seniors are affected most. And so we try to get to as many places as possible, not only to educate those who work with children and our seniors, but also the seniors and children themselves so that they know what's happening to them. So the education is a huge part of what we do. In order to do what we do, a big part of it is not only the resources that we have from people, but also financial resources. So there's ways that you can help, and there's four specific areas that we're trying to fund. And if one of these stands out to you, we'd love for you to contribute to one of them. Uh, part of it has to do with the educational trainings that we do. When we go into schools, when we go into business even sometimes, we'll take books with us. We've produced 5,000 books in the past. It's a children's coloring book and a storybook tells a story about a child who has epilepsy. This year we're reprinting that and actually telling two different stories of two children that we met when we went to their school, schools and did presentations. And so part of what we're asking for is if you want to help donate to help contribute to our coloring book, that would be huge. A lot of individuals when they come in, they need to be on medication. Some of them are getting on medication for the first time or they've been off of it for a while because they couldn't afford it. And so another way to help out is to help people afford their prescriptions. Some prescriptions can be excess of $1,000 a month. Some are much more affordable. But especially for those who are low income and may not have the best insurance, there's need for other people to help pitch in and help join them. Another thing is when people are going through this whole process of figuring out, do I have epilepsy, what's happening to me, are these seizures, they go visit a neurologist. Another way you can help is by helping someone with their neurology appointment, helping them go and get face to face with a doctor who specializes in the brain. And so you could support someone, help pay for that trip. That could be $300 on, on average. And again, if someone doesn't have good insurance, that's no insurance at all, that could delay them greatly because they can't afford to go. Another way you could be involved financially is if you want to support a program that directly impacts not only our children, but now in the future it also impact adults who have epilepsy, and that's through art therapy. Each summer we do a program called Our Studio E, where people get to come in and work with facilitators and professionals in art therapy. And our children and now our adults too will be able to kind of share their experience of what it's like living with epilepsy, fighting epilepsy day in and day out, and use art as that medium to get their story out and to be able to cope with it and deal with it and meet other people who are experiencing the same kind of thing. So those are four different ways financially. Of course, if you just want to donate in general, none of those really stand out to you. That's always welcome to do as well. Uh, but any way that you can help support is greatly appreciated and we thank you for any donation you can make. Thank you.